heard in the, in the presentation, here at the Connecticut Agricultural Experiment Station in the United States, we have laboratory, greenhouse, and field experiments investigating the use of sustainable nanotechnology to increase yield of crops, suppress disease, and ultimately uh, hope to achieve global food security. So this morning we're at our experimental farm, uh, which is Lockwood Farm in Hamden, Connecticut. And you'll hear from some of our postdoctoral research scientists and staff scientists. Uh, they'll be describing some of the work that's ongoing here at the farm, uh, looking at nanotechnology and agriculture. Hi, I'm Wade Elmer at the Connecticut Ag Experiment Station. I'm one of the plant pathologists on the team. And this is a plot where we've been looking at nanoparticles, as you just heard. Uh, we also have another study here where we're looking at different forms of nanosulfur. We've been adding it to the soil and to the foliage to see what effect it has on plant diseases. And this is Dr. Yi Wang, who is uh, the postdoc who's been working on this particular study. Uh, I also have done quite a bit of research on how nanoparticles of copper suppress a disease of eggplant. And if you were to scan down here, you'd see an eggplant showing the classic symptoms of verticillium wilt. And we found that a single application of nanoparticles of copper to the very young plant can increase yield over the season. And we've been documenting this for the last four or five years. At the beginning of this experiment, we took four week old tomato plants and we spray treated them with concentrations of 100 milligrams per liter different charged copper oxide nanoparticles. We used a positively charged copper oxide nanospike, a, po a negatively charged copper oxide nanospike, and a positively charged copper oxide nano sheet, and we sprayed the leaves evenly of all of the plants, including uh, the control treatments where we use the ionized water. Hi, my name is Jaya Borgata. I control the surface chemistry of copper oxide nanoparticles using the excess reagent in solution. When I have copper in excess, I end up making positively charged particles, and when I have OH in excess, I end up making negatively charged particles, and we find that this has a significant impact on disease suppression, with positively charged particles having no effect, and negatively charged particles significantly reducing disease. Uh, good afternoon, my name is Ishak Hadisa. I'm here to introduce to you uh, my current research experiment, which is ARCH experiment, and uh, we're trying to harness uh, uh, TPP with cytosan and zinc oxide nanoparticle. TPP is generally used, used as detergent, and this is creating effluent into the environment by generating phosphorus, which is, can cause algae bloom. Uh, but the concept of this experiment is to annex this TPP and produce a nano fertilizer. Equal volume of cytosan is mixed with a TPP and four different concentrations of zinc oxide and a particle to give us four different products. But the product we have a uh, the solid phase and the liquid phase. The mixture is adjusted, the pH is adjusted to seven to have the supernatant and the solid uh, part. So these can be, uh, the, the, the solid part can be dried into a powder form, which can now be used in greenhouse and also in agricultural field. We're trying to test the product. So after lyophilizing the, the solid part at the end of the experiment, we have the solid product. So the first product is a Kytosan TPP with no zinc oxide nanoparticle. The second one is Kytosan TPP with 1% zinc oxide nanoparticle. The third one is Kytosan TPP with 2% zinc oxide nanoparticle. And the fourth one is Kytosan TPP with 3% zinc oxide nanoparticle. Hi, my name is Washington. I am a virologist and a scientist here at the station. And today I'll be talking to you about a project involving virology and nanotechnology. In this project, we are trying to harness the properties of uh, RNAi, or RNA interference, which is a natural biological process in the plants. The plants use that to fight virus infections. So how does that happen? Once the virus in infects the plant, the RNA from the virus is converted into a, a different type of RNA, or double-strand RNA. And that double-strand RNA is recognized by the plant RNAi machinery as intrusor, and the plant uses the double-strand RNA as a cleavage, as a guide to cleave the original RNA. So how are we taking advantage of this knowledge? So we are isolating RNA from a target virus, in this case is RNA virus, and then in the lab you convert RNA into double-strand RNA, and then we introduce that to the plant. In the lab, we synthesize double-strand RNA, 
and you combine them with nanoparticles to create a double-strand RNA nanoparticle complex. And then we go to the greenhouse and the walk gym, uh, walking rooms, growth rooms to uh, challenge plants, so to treat plants with double-strand RNA nanoparticle complex. And then 10 days later, we do this in different time just to see how long the protection holds. We challenge the plants with the virus, we inoculate the virus with the plant, and then we do symptoms assessment to see if that works. Now, let's go to the lab and see how the synthesis is done. Okay, this is Taylor Sheet Watch, it's a postdoc in the lab, which is doing right now, we synthesize the double strand RNA, and afterwards, we're going to mix that to make the double strand RNA nanopart complex. And now Tate is applying the complex double strand RNA nanopart to the plant. And 10 days from now, 20 days from now, different times we're gonna challenge the plants with uh, the virus to see if that triggers. And this is just a close up to show you the different uh, treatments. This one, the plant was treated with double strand RNA nanoparticles and challenged with the virus. We don't see any symptoms, right? And this, the plant was not treated with double strand RNA nanopart complex, but it developed a lot of symptoms of the virus. The plant is pretty much dying. So this is just to illustrate that our research is working. Double strand RNA complex with uh, nanopart is able to trigger RNA in the plant, which suppress virus infection. My name is Susanna Keria, and I study urban forestry and tree health. I'm interested in how trees respond to stress and how we can grow healthier trees in stressful environments and such as cities. And this will ultimately translate into better well-being for the people who live in the cities. One of my current research projects relates to drought stress in tree seedlings. My collaborators and I wanted to test the impact of copper nanomaterials on drought stress in tree seedlings Copper nanomaterials have had positive impacts on drought tolerance in agricultural crops and we wanted to test this concept on tree seedlings. We, we tested this by applying copper nanomaterials on tree seedlings and monitored their stress responses. Light source here, you open the hatch. Now you have made your first measurements. And then basically this is the output that you get. My name is Nubia Subersa Mena, and I am an assistant scientist at the Department of Analytical Chemistry. My background is in materials science, and one of the tools that we use to analyze our materials is the transmission electron microscope. With this microscope, we can look at the nanoparticles that we use because it's important that we know the characteristics of the materials that we're working with. It can tell us the shape of the nanoparticles, the size of the nanoparticles, and we can even know the elemental composition of our material if we have an X-ray adapted to our microscope. Mm -hmm.